Howdy all, it is me, Jay Soldier Pro, once again. Y'all, today, I have an interesting video. So, this video is actually, well, it's something kind of ridiculous. It is about several Mario Kart games, and it's about links between certain tracks in these games... And these links haven't really been documented before, at least not together they haven't. So some of them are pretty obvious, some of them take a little bit more imagination, but stick with me. Because, well, by the end of this, there may be something quite dire in the Mushroom Kingdom that maybe we need to discuss. <laughs> So, let's get on with it. Our journey actually starts somewhere that's quite nice. Sweet, sweet canyon. I mean, how can you not love this place? It's made up of sweets. They're giant donuts, giant cakes, weird sentient toad men things, okay? And, most importantly for us, yellow liquid, which just so happens to be... Princess Orange branded soda, which literally goes as far as the eye can see. So that's really neat. Okay, there's a lot of soda. What's the what's the weird thing? One, it's yellow, but then again, it's soda, so I could kind of get away with that. I mean, some sodas are some of the weirdest colors you've ever seen. So yellow isn't really the most shocking. What is weird, though, is this isn't the only track in the series to have yellow liquid. Seriously, for such a random color for liquid to be, why do other tracks have it if there's no connection? It just seems odd, right? And you may be thinking, okay, what are the other tracks? Well, we have to look at Mario Kart Wii. And I'm specifically talking about Wii Daisy Circuit. So, yeah, this is relatively strange, but yeah, Daisy Circuit has yellow liquid, so what? This isn't the most interesting thing in the world. Well, it is a little bit odd, actually, because if you look at the liquid, it looks just like the liquid in Sweet Sweet Canyon, which is strange because this is in a completely separate game. So what? Okay, two tracks just so happen to have yellow liquid. What's the big deal? Well... I'll tell you what a bigger deal is. This isn't the only link between these two tracks. There's actually someone in particular that just so happens to be in the equation as well. And she's actually right in your face right now. That's right, I'm talking about Daisy. I don't think it's a shock to anyone that We Daisy Circuit is heavily themed after, well, Daisy. I mean, seriously, it's called We Daisy Circuit... GCN Daisy Cruiser is parked in it, and there's not one but two statues of Daisy, one of which is with Luigi. So, of course, Daisy is heavily referenced here. I mean, come on, it's her own circuit track. What else do you expect from someone who literally introduces herself every time you switch to her in Mario Kart Double Dash? But, Sweet Sweet Canyon is a little bit different, because this isn't obviously Daisy. This isn't obviously royalty. I mean, for all we know, it could just be a random food theme track. I mean, come on. Super Mario Kart has Choco Island. Mario Kart 64 has Choco Mountain. So, what's different about this? Well, the difference is, this has a heavy royalty reference. And the thing is, it's not subtle at all. So yes, there's a giant crown on the top of the largest cake mountain thing in Sweet Sweet Canyon. So, what exactly is going on? Well, that's not anyone's crown. That actually is Daisy's crown. Okay, so there's a giant crown of Daisy on top of the cake. I think that's enough evidence already to basically confirm that Daisy has a lot of influence here, but it actually goes a little bit deeper than that. For another thing, if you look at this advertisement, it is called Royal Pastry Peach and Daisy. So Peach is somehow involved in this. It's not entirely clear yet as to how, but Daisy shows up yet again. And as another thing... Do you remember what the brand of soda that is, well, everywhere so far? Do you recall what that brand is called? Princess Orange. And what princess is associated with wearing orange in the Mushroom Kingdom? 
Princess Daisy. So this brings up an excellent question. Why? Why is Daisy mentioned so much in this track? Why is she so prevalent? Why is she so referenced? I mean, seriously, her soda brand has completely overtaken any water that used to call this canyon place home. She has put a giant crown of herself on the top of the largest cake mountain thing in the kingdom. And in addition to all of this, she also has her name plastered periodically just to remind you who's in charge in case you forgot. And well, I mean, Peach is also involved to some degree, but she's not the focus. And honestly, it's quite obvious that she's not the alpha here. Daisy is by a large margin. So, why? I mean, Daisy doesn't fit. Well, there is one idea. What if Daisy really doesn't belong here? And what if she has just claimed it as her own territory? What if Sweet Sweet Canyon is no more than a colony in what is now Daisy's growing colonial empire? And do you know what a colonial empire might want to do? Expand. Because earlier I mentioned that Mario Kart Wii had tracks. Key term, tracks. Note how it's plural. That had yellow liquid. And we've only talked about one so far. It's time we take a look at N64 DK's Jungle Parkway. Because it also has yellow liquid. So DK's Jungle Parkway has an interesting problem when it comes to the yellow liquid. Not only is the liquid yellow, we've already established that, and by this point you may already be sick of me pointing that out, but there's something else. It looks different than the yellow liquid does on Daisy Circuit or on Sweet Sweet Canyon. And I'm dead serious. Look at how it looks. On Daisy Circa and Sweet Sweet Canyon, it's pretty much uniform. There's not much difference. The only slight difference that there is is caused by lighting, which is caused by the sun. But in terms of it itself, there isn't really much difference in the texture of the liquid. There isn't much in the appearance of it. So let's compare this to N64 DK Jungle Parkway, where, yeah, there's definitely some breaks in the yellow, and this would mean, to me at least, that the concentration of soda here is more diluted compared to a more concentrated solution of soda in Daisy Circuit and Sweet Sweet Canyon. But what does this mean? As far as what this would mean, N64 DK's Jungle Parkway is geographically further away from Sweet Sweet Canyon than We Daisy Circuit is. And this makes sense because that means that the soda has to travel a further distance and therefore has a lower concentration the further it gets from the source. So, that explains that. But it also helps explain something else. Else. This helps explain why the original N64 version of the track has blue water and why the Wii version of the track doesn't have blue water but instead has yellow liquid. And this is because the soda, since the original N64 version, has slowly been creeping into the local environment and has slowly been contaminating the water, which has been resulting in the soda gaining higher and higher concentration, which is why there's a little yellow hue to the liquid here. And if this continues, well, the liquid in N64 DK's Jungle Parkway will be just as yellow as the yellow liquid in Daisy Circuit or in Sweet Sweet Canyon. So something else that's pretty weird about N64 DK's Jungle Parkway is that it has yet to be Daisy-fied. What do I mean by this? Well, if you look at Daisy Circuit, there's Daisy everywhere. And if you look at Sweet Sweet Canyon, there's also a surprising amount of Daisy. So what gives? Why is there nothing Daisy in in 64 DK Jungle Parkway. Now, to be clear, yes, the whole soda thing is, of course, Daisy. It's her own brand, for goodness sake. But in terms of anything else, like her being mentioned in the track, a crown, or anything of that nature, she is completely absent. 
And I think that's because she hasn't really taken this place over yet. So is in 64 DK's Jungle Parkway a colony of the growing neo-colonial Daisy Empire? No, and that's because of Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong is probably one of the last Mario characters you want to get bad at you, and I'm pretty sure trying to conquer the entirety of this area would definitely put Daisy on Donkey Kong's hit list. So, yeah, I think Daisy may be smart to try and not do that. Although I'm pretty sure Donkey Kong is still mad, though, about the whole soda situation, but I think that's a bit more tolerable than, you know, maybe his entire place getting completely annexed and being incorporated into an empire that is being led by a princess that loves herself to death. Okay, so we actually need to talk about the soda situation because it's rather dire. So the thing is the following. N64 DK's Jungle Parkway has proven that any local water supply will be overwhelmed and will be converted into soda in due time if it is at all linked to Sweet Sweet Canyon or Daisy Circuit. So, with that in mind, what other tracks have been contaminated? Well, the answer luckily is none because we've exhausted every track that has yellow liquid. So, in theory, it's only... It's only in 64 uh, DK's Jungle Parkway, Wee Daisy Circuit, and Sweet Sweet Canyon, and that's it. Not too bad, but it gets worse, a lot worse, because we still have another lead to go on. As it turns out, GCN Daisy Cruiser, as I mentioned before, happens to be parked in Wee Daisy Circuit, and Wee Daisy Circuit is one of the three tracks that has had its local water supply contaminated and replaced with Princess Orange Soda. Therefore, we know not only the Daisy Cruiser can actually sail on soda, which is amazing, I'm sure that'll make people want to go into the cruise ship a lot more, <laughs> but as another thing, it also means that wherever the cruise ship can go, so can the soda. And this wouldn't be very helpful if the cruise ship didn't go around, but in true cruise ship fashion, you do get to certain destinations. Specifically, the Daisy Cruiser can be found in the background of two certain tracks, GCN Peach Beach and GCN Yoshi Circuit. So yeah, both Peach Beach and Yoshi Circuit need to be seriously concerned about what is coming, a soda apocalypse. The watery oceans that both tracks are by well, they're going to be converted into soda oceans unless this is somehow stopped in its tracks. So, you must be thinking now, well, at least that's the end of it, but it isn't the end of it. No, we still got more tracks, actually. While GCN Peach Beach doesn't really give us a new lead at the moment, GCN Yoshi Circuit actually does, and it comes in the form... A fruit? Yep, it's time that we investigate Delafina fruit. This just keeps on getting more and more absurd as time goes on, but yes, Delafino Fruits, which is being sourced from Isle Delafino. And I say that for the following reasons. One, it's literally called Delafino Fruits, kind of a dead giveaway. And two, you have a graffiti M on it, which is a signature thing done in Super Mario Sunshine, which takes place on Isle Delfino. So, yes, this fruit is being sourced from Isle Delfino. So, what gives? Why is that important? Well, here's the thing. Isle Delfino is confirmed to be an island. And Yoshi Circuit, where this advertisement can be found, one of several tracks, we'll get to that. Well, the track is also an island. So... How do you get, how would you get fruit from one island to another island? Theoretically, you could do it by plane, but Yoshi Circuit doesn't have an airport. So how are you going to do it? Well, by ship. And guess what? If it can be shipped via ship between two destinations, there must be 
liquid between those destinations. And guess what? We already proved that Yoshi Circuit is already at risk of soda contamination. And just like Daisy Circuit, where the ship can go, the soda can go. So Isle Delfino is officially at risk of getting contaminated by soda. The entire island in the future may be surrounded by Princess Orange Soda if this apocalypse is not averted. If you love Super Mario Sunshine, well, here's incentive to care. Believe it or not, though, that's not even where this stops. We still have more to talk about about this. Oh my goodness. So, for one thing, this advertisement can also be found in GCM Peach Beach, which we already discussed, which I would personally argue helps sell my point even more. But, there's another track this can be found in, actually two. The first of those is DS Delfino Square, which, well, you probably expected based on the name. I mean, it literally is Delfino right in the name. So, yeah, if it wasn't already classified uh, by default by El Delfino itself already being classified as in danger, well, it now surely is. And the other one is GCN Mushroom City. Yeah, kind of strange, right? Um, yeah, advertisements of this can be found there. But if you play the track, you may be confused, really, because it, there's no obvious, you know, ocean, really. With the track, but that's where I need to point you to GCN Mushroom Bridge. Because in GCN Mushroom Bridge, you can actually see GCN Mushroom City across a body of water. And because both of these have connection to this body of water, well, I don't think it's a stretch of the imagination to think that they're both at risk of soda contamination. And surely, this must be where this insanity stops. But it is not. So we talked about one advertisement, and it's time that we talk about yet another advertisement. Sunshine Parts. Oh my goodness me. And these are also being sourced from, you guessed it, Isle Delfino. Okay, so Isle Delfino, Sunshine Parts. I'm saying this is from Isle Delfino for the record, just because it's literally called Sunshine Parts. Shines were a huge thing in Super Mario Sunshine, so referencing them makes obvious sense. Also, they're called Sunshine Parts, which is an even bigger reference, and there's even a giant shine on there in case you didn't get the shine portion of it. So, yeah, this is obviously paying homage to Super Mario Sunshine, and therefore it is being sourced from Isle Delfino, which means it's being transported by boat, and where a boat can go from a place that we already know soda can go, it also means soda can go along with the boat. So, with this in mind, where else is at risk? Well, this isn't as clear-cut as the previous tracks because there are a couple here that aren't actually at risk, even though I'll be listing them, and I'll explain why as we go. First and foremost is one of these tracks, GCN Dry Dry Desert, and this is simple. It doesn't have any water to lose. So you might be thinking, well, how does a track get something from a boat if it isn't connected to any body of water? This may just debunk my entire argument. Well, I have a good counter-argument. What if you just transport the thing from the boat by truck or something to the destination that is further inland. However, if the destination is right on the body of water, I think it's fair to assume that you could just pick it up from said body of water, and you don't need to truck it further inland. That's my defense for you. So, is GC and Dry Dry Desert at risk? No. Before someone says the 8 Deluxe version, allow me to clarify. That is an oasis that is clearly contained. It is not connected to any massive, God only knows how large ocean that connects to who knows how many tracks in totality. It is an oasis that is isolated in the middle of a desert, and it's amazing that it even is there. So, is Dry Dry Desert at risk, even though it has an advertisement that, is in, that proves endangerment of other tracks? 
dry, dry desert specifically, actually stay safe because it being a barren wasteland in the middle of an arid desert actually proved useful this time. So that's good. Good dry, dry desert, I suppose. I never thought that would ever come out of my mouth, but here we are. Okay, so that's enough dry, dry desert talk. Let's try and get through the other tracks in some decent speed. GCN Dino Dino Jungle. This has a large expanse of water, it has a sunshine parts advertisement, and the water is not clearly contained. It's at risk. DS Delfino Square. This track has already been confirmed to be at risk. So, yeah, it's a repeat, but it helps solidify the argument. Let's move on. Super Bell Subway. At first, you may just write this one off since, well, it's a subway. And the track itself, yeah, no, it's not at risk at all. But there is a local map, and it does help us in a couple ways. First and foremost, we Moo Moo Meadows and we Wario's Goldmine, we can clearly see, are not at risk because they're not attached to any body of water. So, okay, but the real thing that this map helps us with is, well, where is this track getting the sunshine parts from? Remember in Dry Dry Desert when I said that more inland areas could just get the stuff shipped via truck and it could be unloaded off the ship and basically transported further inland using trucks? Well, that's what's happening here most likely because it looks like it has to go through a city and where is the shipping occurring? Well, Toad Harbor. And would, wouldn't you know it, there's a track called Toad Harbor. Therefore, I believe it's safe to say that Toad Harbor is indeed in, at risk of contamination. So let's move on. 3DS Daisy Hills. Fittingly, a daisy track considering that, well, all of this is Daisy's fault. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of water. It goes on beyond where you can see. So, yes, 3DS Daisy Hills is at risk. So, so far, we have established that Daisy is in charge of a neocolonial empire and her soda is conquering literally everything it possibly can. We have also established that Sweet Sweet Canyon is being used as a colony by Daisy and Daisy is, well, presumably exploiting it for her own gain. But there is something that I have yet to inform you about in this video. You just got pranked. This was uploaded on April Fool's. This is an April Fool's video. And you have wasted approximately 23 minutes of your life on something that is no more than a joke. Did I succeed in tricking you or did you know along the way somehow? Let me know in the comments. Anyways, thank you for reaching this point in the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And, well, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye. <laughs>